and welcome to Digital Works. We've put together this informational orientation to tell you a little bit more about our program so that way you can see whether or not it might be a good fit for you. As a virtual candidate, the first step is to register. This is something that you've already done. Um, you may want to tell your friends where to do it at so that way they can also go online and register. The next step is to view this orientation and then email the facilitator that was identified in your welcome email with the three key words from this presentation. Okay? Once your e email makes it to the facilitator, the facilitator will in turn get back to you to schedule a time for you to complete your intake assessments and your personal interview. Once all of that is done, those who qualify will be offered a seat in an upcoming class. The evolution of job searching. Well, where did it start? Way back when, early 1900s, it, when you got the paper, you looked in the help wanted section, right? If there was jobs in there that you liked, you circled them, you highlighted them, you sent out your resumes to everybody that was involved. Sometimes you heard back from maybe one out of every 10 resumes that you sent out, but it was a start. Well, from there, we went to job fairs. And if you've never been to a job fair, I encourage you to go. It's a great opportunity to get to meet some of the people with the companies and see whether or not you think it's a good fit for you. Next, we had social media. Wow, social media came on the scene. And if you wanted to know anything about anything or who's hiring or what's going on, you just jumped on your social media account and there you had it. You had all the information that everybody was willing to share with you. But digital works is where we're at now. What's different with digital works? Well, we've taken a little bit of everything and combined it. We offer training, and at the end of training, job placement assistance. So what we've done so far is take the best of both worlds, put it all together, and present it to you so that way you have all the tools you need to go after that remote job. So the job market changes. Oh, it's constantly changing. But right now, especially, it is changing rapidly because everybody is making the move to remote work and work at home. So what do you need to do? You need to be willing to change some things as well. Maybe the way that you looked at things before, your approach, your abilities, your outlook, your resume, all things that we will go over with you in class to help you get ready for this remote work opportunity. First key word that I want you to remember is digital. Digital, D-I-G-I-T-A-L. We're gonna go into telework. And if you've never considered telework as something before, well, this is something that I want you to take a look at. All you need to do is work from home using a computer, an internet connection, and a telephone. That's it, okay? And it is very simple to get into this line of work. Approximately one out of five workers were teleworkers pre-COVID-19. That number has shot through the ceiling with the introduction of the coronavirus. Since 2005, the number of teleworkers increased by over 60% and over 2 million people are now working at home. And like I said, that number, it, it's gonna continue to go up because of that. Who is it that's teleworking? Is it the mother, the parent that has four or five kids? Yes, and it's more important, over half of the people that are doing this are men. And a typical teleworker can save anywhere from $2,000 to $7,000 annually on expenses. So you look at a starting rate for a work at home job, and it may be a little lower than a starting rate for what you would have normally applied for. But when you factor in your state saving $2,000 to $7,000 because you don't have the transportation costs, you don't have the childcare costs, you're not eating out as much, you don't have the wardrobe that you have to purchase. It is a savings that you need to factor in. So we wanna look at it, is it right for you? I guarantee you, if you're watching this video right now, it is not right for everybody that watches this, okay? What we wanna do is we wanna find out if indeed it is a good fit for you, then let us help you get to where you wanna go. But we also wanna be able to help you ascertain whether or not it's something that makes sense, okay? So the pros, no commute. Ah, jump out of bed, jump on your computer, and there you are, it's perfect. You have more time with your family. Yeah, obviously, if I don't have to drive an hour to work and an hour home, there's two more hours a day that I have that I can spend with my family. There is cost savings, like we've discussed, because of childcare. You don't eat out, so those things come into play. You eat from home, all of those are cost savings. You have a more relaxed atmosphere at your own home, and you have extreme flexibility. Okay, so if those things sound good, fantastic, but hold on there. Let's look at the cons. 
If you are a social butterfly and you require social interaction, this may not be the job for you, okay? You're gonna end up in a brick and mortar type job where at nine o'clock the bell rings, everybody meets up at the water cooler. They all wanna get together and celebrate somebody's birthday and eat cake. Well, you're not gonna get that at home. You're gonna be alone. You're gonna be making your own cake and eating your own, eating your own stuff at the water cooler. Self-motivation. This one's really important. If you are a self-motivated individual, you know it. And if you're not a self-motivated individual, you know that too. But here's something that I want to toss out for you, okay? So you, let's say that you went ahead and did this job. And the first week you're in the job and everything is going well, everything's going wonderful, so you take Monday off the second week. Why? Well, you know, you went out the, the weekend before with friends and you, you really needed Monday to just recover and get back on your feet again. So you took Monday off. But you did work on Tuesday, right? And then Wednesday rolled around, and on Wednesday, well, your daughter had a, a doctor's appointment. You knew that. So you took Wednesday off, and, and you went and took her to the doctor's appointment. And then on Thursday morning when you get up to work, well, you must have caught something when you took your daughter to the doctor's yesterday because now you're not feeling well on Thursday, and so you take part of the day off on Thursday. You do squeeze in a few hours Thursday afternoon, but then on Friday, well, your family wanted to go camping this weekend. And so unfortunately, because they want to go camping, somebody's got to go get everything ready. So you don't work a full day on Friday. Ultimately, what's going to happen is the paycheck is going to come out for that week that I just described a few weeks down the line in most cases. You're going to get that paycheck and you're going to be so tempted. I will be the first person you call and you will tell me, Tammy, this program does not work. And I will ask you very politely to check yourself because in this particular situation that I just explained, what didn't work? That's right, you didn't work. And if you didn't work, you're not going to see those dollars start showing up on your paycheck. You've gotta be self-motivated to drive yourself. This is your business, you're doing it from your home. Get out of bed and go to work, okay? So you know whether or not that's you. You need to be able to separate work and life. Easier said than done, right? Each one of you, if you have children, a spouse, anybody else in your house, it's very easy. They can see you there. So you're home, right? Well, where's my socks? Well, I need this. Well, can you get up for just a second and fix me something to eat? No, you can't. You're working. So you need to be able to hang that shingle out that says, I am at work right now. Please hold all your questions until later. And if you can do that, then this is the good job for you. If not, and you're going to have a difficult time separating work and life, you may want to reconsider. Longer hours, because you work from home, believe it or not, and the computer's right there, and the opportunity to make more money is right there, you are gonna be more and more tempted to put in more hours. And more hours means more money, and that sounds like a wonderful thing, and it should be on the pro side, but it's on the con side. Why? Because you put in too many hours. You reach a point where you're not taking care of yourself any longer where you're not showering and you're not eating right and you're not sleeping well. And that affects you personally, that affects your health. So what we wanna say is longer hours definitely can be a con, just know where your line is. You just take care of yourself. Distractions would be anything from the neighbor mowing their grass in the middle of the afternoon to a dog in your house possibly barking when the, the delivery man comes to the door. All of those things are gonna to need to be null and void. So you're going to have to find a way to get to a quiet place and work from this quiet environment in your home. Last but not least, a con. You have to be 18 years or older. So if you happen to be less than 18, um, unfortunately we aren't in a position yet where we can offer this program to you. So those are the pros and cons. Hopefully that's helped you to be able to figure out whether or not this is a good opportunity for you. I love this. All roads point to telework. Isn't it time to make the road less traveled your new way to work? Absolutely, it is definitely the time. So who are we and where did we come from? Digital Works is a program of Connected Nation and Connected Nation is a leading technology organization committed to bringing affordable high-speed internet and broadband enabled resources to everyone. They focus on three things. They focus on access, adoption, and use. Okay, so they do a whole lot more than just digital works. This is just one of the programs that they actually support. Before you make any decision as to move forward or not move forward, check us out. Why? 
I, want, I would not do anything with any company until I had a thorough chance to get online and check them out as well. This is where you go, digitalworksjobs.org. You're going to have this show up and it's going to give you an opportunity to find out a little bit more about our program. Theconnectednation.org is the parent company that I just got done explaining to you. And driveyourlearning.org, once you've registered, and you have because you're already here watching this video, once you've registered, you have full access to the Drive Portal. Okay, there are a ton of free courses and stuff that are out there just waiting for you. If you decide to move forward with the Digital Works program, that's great. We populate those courses through the Drive Portal as well. But the driveyourlearning.org, simply because you've already registered, get online again. You, all you need to do is put in the email that you registered with and the password that you first set up. Check out some of the free courses that are on there that you can take advantage of. How does this program work? Well, there's a few different steps and let me see if I can explain them to you. So you are interested, you figure out that, yep, definitely a good fit for you. Well, here's what we want to do. We want you to go through some assessments for us. Why? We want to make sure, yep, you've decided it's good for you, but we want to make sure that you're a good fit for this type of work as well. So these assessments that we'll put you through, there are four tests and a typing test, and we'll take those results that, that come in from those tests, and then we'll tabulate those and sit down with you and do a personal interview. Once we've done that personal interview with you and determined whether or not you have the, you know, the right the right stuff to get into the next class, well then we'll talk training with you. When does the next class start? How many days does it run? Um, what times are the classes? Right now, it, at this point in time, and today is August 6th, 2020. I had to put that in there, right? Uh, but right now, everything is virtual in our program. And the reason that I say that is everybody about six months ago experienced COVID-19. And COVID-19 made it absolutely impossible to conduct business as usual. So all classes at that time became 100% virtual. We would absolutely love to have you check out the assessments, see if you can possibly get into one of our training classes. Training lasts for three weeks. Step three, certification. You finish those three weeks of training. Fantastic, what are you gonna do now? Well, you're gonna get a certification for finishing our class, but then you're also gonna have the opportunity to take the NRF, the National Retail Federation, three-year customer service and sales certification. Now, that's a national certification that you have, and that is included in with the program. So you take that test, once you pass, you get that certificate, and that's something that you can put on your resume to separate out yourself from all those other applicants that are going for those jobs. Step four, placement. Ah, you finished the actual training, now what are we gonna do? Well, now you're gonna start applying for jobs. And what you're gonna do with us is help, we're gonna help you, we're gonna guide you down the path as to which companies right now are looking to hire. Which companies match up with your needs and your wants? Okay, and not everybody's looking for the same thing. Some are looking for 1099 positions, some are looking for W-2, some part-time, some full-time. We are here to help you specifically after we finish with that training with placement. So the training takes place more or less as a class atmosphere and the placement begins to happen on a one-on-one -on -one basis. Last but not least, step five, ongoing mentorship. This part, it, Honestly, this is probably one of my favorite parts of the program, right? So when everything gets started, it's brand new, and you're, you're doing everything that you can to be able to excite and entice and keep everybody motivated. However, as soon as that first class finishes and the second class comes in, these people now are the people that this class will look to for mentorship. And it's an ongoing community building thing. It, it starts out so small but it grows so quickly. And pretty soon you understand that in the world of remote work where generally people are very, very alone, you're not. You have a support system and a mentor system in place that came, all those people that came before you. How does the program actually work for training? Well, the three weeks that I talked about is three weeks online, virtual training, um, normal four hour classes every day, Monday through Friday for three weeks. So we do end up getting together, maybe not in a, in a physical setting, it might be a virtual setting, but we do end up getting together. We get into customer service. We go through a ton of customer service. How do you handle an irate customer? 
What are some good questioning techniques that I need to learn? Why is it important to have those listening skills? What selling skills do I need to know to do these jobs? Customer service also involves a lot more. For us, that's where we do everything with interactive, interactive training. So role play, um, script reading, message transcription, everything like that is involved in phase one of customer service, where we actually take what you learn in your videos and we move that across and put it into action. Phase two gets into business and technical skills. And in phase two, we like to go ahead and give you guys the tools of the trade. For those of you that don't know how to clear the cash on your machines or set up dual monitors or check your headsets or anything about virus protection, we will go through all of those steps with you. If you've never used the snipping tool, oh boy, we'll introduce you to that too. That's one of my favorite things. But this will give you the tools that you need to be able to work from home. And if you already have them, that's great. It's a review. And if you don't have them, this is, this is very helpful information. Phase three gets into typing skills. Well, you type every day of the class, every single day. We use it as phase three because this is actually where you test. And in order to pass our course, you need to hit 32 words per minute. That's the adjusted typing speed after errors. And that would get you a graduating score out of this program. So if indeed you are interested in getting in the program, Right now, to get in, the qualifying score is 30 words per minute, and we type every day in class. To graduate at the end of three weeks, you're just hitting 32. And that qualifies you for, I want to say, probably 85, 90% of the job opportunities that are out there. So this is a great opportunity. Phase four gets into career readiness. In career readiness, what are we going to do with you? Well, we're going to go over interview skills with you. Why? It's not the same thing as coming in and sitting down and having an interview face to face with somebody. This is online. You're going to do a virtual interview, maybe two or three virtual interviews. We'll have some mock interviews that we'll do here. We will go over the four common questions that you're going to need to know the answers to before you get ready to interview with these companies. Then we're going to go from that into resumes. If you already have a resume when you walk in the door, this part may be easier for you. But what we're going to do is we're going to take your resume that you have and make it telework ready. That's a little different, okay? It's not a resume that is going to be two or three pages long. It's not a resume that is going to definitely look like somebody will, will have to read through paragraph after paragraph. It is very short, sweet, and to the point because these people, they don't have very long. They look at the resumes in a few seconds. They're trying to figure out who they want to entertain job offers for and who they don't. We want you to get that job opportunity. We want you to get the interview. So we're going to help you streamline your resume so it includes those key words that these employers are looking for. Get past the screener, get into the HR's hands, and then say, yes, I want to interview this person. So we'll work with you with your resume, your cover letter. We will also get into networking skills. And once we finish networking skills, we will take a look at online applications. How does that differ from anything else that you've ever done? Okay, so we will guide you through all of those steps. So once those four are finished, it is time for placement. And we will actually begin placement together in class. That third week of class, we actually start handing out some of the information that we want you guys to do as far as vetting the companies, taking a look for yourself. We've done our job. We know what we have and that we've been working with. We've got over 70 companies that we've been working with for the past seven years, and they have done a phenomenal job for our graduates. However, we want you to make sure it's the right company for you as well. So we'll help you with a little bit of a walkthrough on how do you go about researching these companies to make sure that these opportunities are what you want. So what does it take to get the job, right? That's what we want to know. Well, first and foremost, you have to successfully complete the training. That is huge. I know it sounds like a very, very easy thing, but that means being on time for class. And classes right now, yes, they're online, 100% virtual, but there are webinar sessions that you have to attend. And you have to attend each and every webinar session. Right now, you are permitted one and only one excused, which means you've notified us in advance, um, absence. After that, unfortunately, we take your seat and pass it on to the next person. So if indeed you're interested, it's important to know that attendance is majorly important. And you can't complete unless you're here. We're going to give you positions that we want you to apply for specifically. We have taken the information that you've provided with us. 
cross-referenced it with our list of employers, and we know this particular group of, co of companies right here is going to offer you basically what you are looking for, what your skill set is. Okay, once we give you those, then we want you to go ahead and attack those particular ones first. So when you get the invitation from the employers, you're going to go ahead and complete their background checks, their assessments. Um, you're going to do their voice auditions, and if we are available, please contact us. We'd be happy to help you through that. This is so important. If you are looking to do this and you're serious about doing this, please don't put in half the effort. If you put in half the effort and you get out half the results, you're not going to be happy and neither are we. So please, if this is what you want to do, give us 100% so we can get you 100% back. Keyword number two is jobs. J-O-B-S, jobs. Are you ready? Here's how you know. Are you prepared to put in everything that it takes to get that job? You have to keep in mind that you, job searching is something that's not an overnight activity, regardless of whether it's online or in person, okay? So be, be ready and willing to put in the time that's necessary. You will definitely be turned down for some of the positions you apply for. Why? Well, that's just part of the process, okay? We aren't the employer. The employers are going to be the ones that are hiring you. We're providing you with the tools to go after those jobs. But that doesn't necessarily mean that that job that they're looking to hire for is going to be open long term. Point in case. One class, I had two individuals. They sat right next to each other. And these two individuals were so perfectly matched, it was unbelievable. They both applied for the same job at the same company on the same day. Right? The next day, she got an invitation. She was excited. She was thrilled. She got a job offer. And he got turned down. And immediately they came to me and they're like, I don't understand what happened. Well, what happened was I went back to the company. They said we needed to fill 100 spots. She was spot number 100. He was applicant 101. It was nothing he had done wrong, but he did get turned down for that job at that time. The next time they came through a hiring ring, they went back through again, and he was hired on with the next wave of employees. So don't always, don't, don't be disheartened, okay? Don't give up. We will continue to help you until you are where you want to be. Hang in there with us. What types of job opportunities are out there? Well, psh, pretty much just open sky, right? However, this particular program is going to prepare you for inbound, outbound customer service, sales, upsells, affinity, surveys. Now, does it mean that you're going to have to call people cold call? No. Inbound, outbound sales means nine times out of 10 and 90% of what we have is inbound. You have the opportunity to take the orders. People already know what they want. They're calling you to place the order. So basically, you're an order taker at that point. Or you might get into some sort of tech support and um, it, that, in that particular case there, you're just supplying information and helping them through problems and troubleshooting their situation. Okay? There are outbound jobs out there, outbound calling type, type situations. If you're looking for that, just let your facilitator know and we will work with you to help get you into those positions. Some of the positions are W-2 and some are 1099. So once again, if, if it makes a difference to you which job you're looking for, the 1099, that's where you're going to be basically your own boss. You're taking care of your own taxes. There's not benefits generally available with any of those jobs. But a W-2, they're going to hold back some taxes, right? Which is good for some people. But yet, a lot of folks get into the W-2 not because of the tax situation. They get into it because of the benefits. With a W-2 job, we actually have employers that pay you to take time off and go on vacation from home. That's pretty cool. So W-2 or 1099, both out there as available options. They're hourly or per talk minute. Well, you can get on with some of the companies and they have an hourly rate. They will tell you what hours they need you to work and you comply. You will have other companies that we can introduce you to or will introduce you to that they actually pay per talk minute. You choose which half hour segments you want to work. And while you're on that phone, anytime you're talking to a customer, you get paid per talk minute that you're on that call. So the options are out there. Scheduling is up to you as well. So once I said, some of the folks have set schedules. Some let you set your schedule. So when you come to us, if you're telling me, I want extreme flexibility in my schedule setting, I'm going to go this way with you. 
and I'm going to hook you up with the company that has the most flexible scheduling that allows you to pick your slots and cancel your slots and do everything like that, as opposed to the companies that are coming out telling me this is a 40-hour position and I need them to be available between 8 a.m. and 9 p.m. Monday through Friday. In those situations, um, if that's not what you were looking for, then if you're letting us know, we're trying to match you with the right employers. So you work from home with a computer and internet and a POTS line. That is a plain old telephone service. No bells, no whistles, no, um, no voice, mm -hmm, no voicemails, no call forwardings, um, nothing like that. You want that phone, if you're on it, to ring busy or at least that's what the employers want. They don't want to lose anybody in the system. Okay? They don't want it to be forwarded to your voicemail system. So a plain old POTS line. There, you know, there are, where things are when and where available, you can come in and work from the center. And if you're interested in that, please reach out to your facilitator for more information. Career path options. Well, you can get into customer service. That is probably the mainstay of the people that come into this program. They're looking to get into customer service, and there are a ton of opportunities out there for that. But the next step up is instead of being just a customer service agent, now I'm a dedicated agent, meaning that I take care of one particular client calls. That's all I do is answer their particular line all the time. That is one step up. Then you have tech support, help desk, and yes, there are even more opportunities out there and everything right now is moving in the direction of work from home. So after you start working, what are we gonna ask you to do? Well, this is what we ask. We ask you to submit a copy of your wage information or your pay stub as verification of employment. What does this do? Well, it allows us to validate the program. Then we take that information and we put it all together and compile it and we can come back to you then and say starting wages for this program for the job placement portion are between 10 and 15 dollars an hour we can actually say that based upon the pay stubs that you provide so with job pay going up with entry rates going up as you supply us with that information it changes that base so that way then we can go back and tell the next class well between this and this but this is where we need your help. In order for us to help others, it's really important that we have accurate information. So after you finish the program, we don't want to lose touch with you. We want to stay in touch and be able to grab this information as it becomes available. Keyword number three, work. Moving forward, what do you want to do now, right? So you've heard about the program, you're interested in the program, you think you'd be a good fit for this. Where do I go? Well, classes are forming every month. Every month there's a new class that's starting. If you're interested in getting into the pipeline for one of those upcoming classes, what we need you to do is go back to that welcome email, the one that had the link in for this orientation, find your facilitator, and send them an email. Now, this is very, very important, and this is where most people have a, a slight mess. The subject line of the email, the subject line has to have the three key words that have been in this presentation today okay then you will want to send that off as soon as your facilitator gets it they're going to contact you to set up those intake assessments so that way you can get that first set of testing out of the way to find out whether or not you might be a good fit for this program your facilitators contact information is found in your welcome email the same one that you went to for the link to this presentation and they will be happy to answer any questions that you may have if you need them answered prior to your calls Thank you for your interest and we look forward to working with you.